In math lesson number three, we're going to be introducing you to the memory circle or the memory T, and we'll be using commission problems as the basis to demonstrate these. Realize, however, you can use this memory circle or memory T in a lot of other types of problems. This is math lesson number three. We're going to be dealing with the memory circle or sometimes called the memory T, and these will be commission and sales price problems. So let's first talk about what's called the memory circle. And what I want you to think about here is in these types of problems, we have two dollar amounts and a percentage or a rate. What I'd like you to remember is that in the memory circle, the small dollars go on top and the big dollars go on the bottom left and the percentage on the right. And what this is saying is that the small dollars on top are equal to the big dollars times the percentage. The memory T is the same as the memory circle, but without the circle. The small dollars on top are equal to the big dollars on the bottom times the percentage. And we'll see how these are used in a commission problem. So when we deal with commissions, ask yourself, which are the small dollars and which is the big dollars? I think we would all agree that the sales price compared to the commission is larger than the commission. The commission is always a percentage of the sales price. So if we set that up with the memory circle, that's the commission on the top is equal to the sales price times the percentage. Or if we use the memory T, the commission, the small dollars, is equal to the sale price times the percentage. So how do we use this to solve a problem? So if we were solving for commission, that's always equal to the sales price times the commission rate. And I'll show you how to use the other parts of the memory circle in a little bit. Whenever you have a question with a percentage, it's very important to ask yourself, which is the small dollars, which are the large dollars? The small dollars always go on top and are equal to the large dollars on the bottom times the percentage. Small dollars on top equal to the large dollars on the bottom times the percentage. Using a commission problem as an example, which would be the small dollars? Is the commission the small dollar amount or is the sales price the small dollar amount? Well, I think we could all agree the commission would be the small dollars. So the commission goes on top, the small dollars on the bottom times the percentage. So that small dollars, the commission would be, would be equal to the sales price times the commission rate. So with commission problems, you always want to calculate the total commission first. Then you want to calculate the broker's share or the salesperson's share. Oftentimes, two brokerage firms are involved in a sale, so what you do is you calculate the total commission and find the listing broker's or the buyer's broker's share and then find the salesperson's share. So let's do a problem. Number one, salesperson J sells two and one half sections of land at $50 per acre. If salesperson J receives 40% of a 5% commission, how much is earned by J? Well, a couple of things here in this problem. First and foremost is what's a section? Well, by definition, a section of land contains 640 acres. That's a number you have to memorize. One section of land is 640 acres. With that in mind, since J sold two and one half sections, we multiply two and a half by 640, and that gives us 1,600 acres that were sold. Now let's find the sales price. The sales price is equal to the 1,600 acres times the $50 per acre, or a sales price of $80,000. Now let's draw the memory circle and here it is, remember, commission, the small dollars on top, are equal to the large dollars, the sales price, 80,000 times 5%. So finding the total commission then, we take the sales price times the rate, 80,000 times 5% is 
and that gives us the commission of $4,000. Are we finished? No, we're not, because salesperson J is only going to get 40% of that. So, using the memory circle for the salesperson share, the salesperson's commission is, go, is the smaller of the two dollar amounts that goes on top, and that would be equal to the full commission, the $4,000 times 40%. So here we go, let's do that. 4,000 times 40%, that equals the salesperson share of $1,600. I want to emphasize that none of these commission problems are representative of what happens out in the real world relative to what commission dollars might be or what commission splits might be between the real estate salesperson and the brokerage firm. Question number two. A broker agrees to pay 20% of the gross commission to the listing salesperson and 40% of the balance to the selling salesperson. If the brokerage fee is 6% and the house sells for $42,500, how much will the broker net? So let's first put this in the memory circle. What we have is the commission is equal to the sales price of 42.5 times the commission rate of 6%. So find the total commission, we multiply the sales price times the rate so that's 42.5 times 6% or a commission of $2,550. Now that's the total commission. Now let's find the listing salesperson's share. And remember the problem said the listing salesperson gets 20% of the gross commission. So that listing salesperson's share is 20% of $2,550. The total commission is the large dollar amount on the left-hand side on the bottom, and 20% is that listing salesperson's share. So we multiply that $2,550 by 20%, and we get the listing salesperson's share of $510. Is that our answer? Nope. We want to know how much the broker will net. So we now have to figure out how much the selling salesperson is going to be paid because the question says 40% of the balance after the listing salesperson is paid to the selling salesperson. So we find that by subtracting the listing salesperson's share from the gross commission. So that's $2,550 minus $510 so the balance after paying the listing salesperson is $2,040. Now let's find the broker's net. Now the broker's net is going to be the balance $2,040 times 60%. Now why did I do that? Well it says the selling salesperson is going to get 40% of the balance and that means the broker is going to get 60% of the balance. So we can multiply the $2,040 directly by the 60% to find the broker's net, and that's $1,224. Now, of course, we could have taken another route. We could have taken the $2,040, multiplied it by 40%, found that selling salesperson's share, and then subtracted that from the $2,040, and that would give us the same result. Number three, salesperson K sells a $162,100 property. K's commission will be 8% of the first $75,000 of the sales price and 3% of the balance. How much more would K have received if the commission rate was a flat 6%? So let's first find the commission on the first $75,000. So with our memory circle, that commission is equal to the $75,000 times the 8%, the sales price times the rate. So that gives us a commission of $6,000 on the first $75,000. Now let's find the balance of the sales price. So we subtract the $75,000 from the 162.1 one, 
and that gives us a balance of $87,300. We do that, of course, because the commission on that balance is only 3%. So now let's find the commission on the balance. That commission is equal to the $87,100 balance times 3%. So we'll do that and we'll come up with the commission on the balance of $2,613. Now, the total commission in the first way of doing it is the sum of those two, 6,000 plus 2613, or $8,613. Now let's find how much more or, or less possibly that K would have received if the commission rate was a flat 6%. So with the 6% commission rate on the full amount, that commission is equal to the sales price 162.1 times 6%, and that gives us 162 times 6% or $9,726. We can now find the difference in commissions by subtracting the 8613 from the flat 6% commission, which is 9726, for a difference of $1,113. You know, it's very rare that you would ever see in the real world a comparison between a commission calculated one way and a commission calculated the other way. Commissions are typically established between the listing broker and the seller of the property or the listing broker and the lessor of the property in a commercial lease situation. This question number three then is really hypothetical. Instead of saying the small dollars on top equal the large dollars times the rate, we could say that the part is equal to the whole times the percentage. And our memory circle would look like this, the part, the small dollars on top, and the whole, the large dollar amount on the bottom left, and the percentage being the rate. So if we know two of the items, we can always find the third item. To find the unknown item, you wanna proceed in this way. Step one would be to fill in the two known items, and then step two, cover the unknown item, and then multiply or divide as indicated. So question, what if instead of asking what the commission is, what if the question asked you to find the sales price or the commission rate? So let's take an example. What's the sales price if the commission is $15,000 and the commission rate is 5%? Well, here's our memory circle. Commission is equal to sales price times the rate. But in this particular example, we're looking for the sales price and we're given the commission and the rate. So that tells us that the sales price is equal to the commission $15,000 divided by the rate of 5%, so our sales price is $300,000. So keep in mind, given two knowns, you can find the third by covering that one up and proceeding to divide or multiply as the memory circle indicates. In the first couple of problems, we said, okay, to find the commission, multiply the sales price times the commission rate. But in this particular problem, we're looking for the sales price. So we kind of cover that up, put our hand over that part of the memory circle, and that tells us to divide the small dollars, the commission on the top, by the rate, and that gives us the sales price, in this example, $300,000. For another example, what's the commission rate if the commission is $15,000 and the sales price is $300,000? So here's our memory circle again set up for commissions, and now we fill in what we know. $15,000 is the commission, $300,000 is the, is the sales price, and we're looking for the rate. So our rate is equal to the commission divided by the sales price. $15,000 divided by $300,000 gives us a rate of 5%. In this problem, we were asked to find the commission rate given the commission and the sales price. With commission being the small dollars on top, the sales price on the bottom, to find the rate, we divide the commission by the sales price. So that does it for our math lesson number three, the memory circle. 
commission and sales price problems.